This crocheted mini pocket wall hanging was inspired by a picture I saw on Pinterest of a macrame version. I made it using the linen stitch in the round and it is very easy to make. To begin, you will need to make a chain of 22. Since we are going to be working in the continuous round, you will need a stitch marker. I am placing a stitch marker in the very next stitch. Then I'm going to place a single crochet in the second chain from my hook. Chain one and skip one. Place a single crochet in the next chain stitch. Chain one, skip one. Place a single crochet in the next stitch. If you're familiar with the linen stitch, we are doing it right now. You will continue making that until the very last stitch. In the very last stitch of this row, we are going to place a single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one in the last stitch. And we're going to turn our work so that we are continuing up the bottom side of the foundation chain. So you're going to skip the first stitch. Technically, we already worked in that last one. And we're going to place a single crochet in the next stitch. It is sharing the same space as the single crochet on the opposite side of the foundation chain. Chain one and skip one. Place a single crochet in the next stitch. Again, your single crochet will be sharing a stitch. Chain one and skip one. Single crochet. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Continue this all the way to the last stitch. When you get to the last stitch, you're going to place a single crochet and a chain one stitch. You are not going to slip stitch to join. We are going to be working into the stitch with the stitch marker, the very first chain that we skipped. Since it is so small, I'm going to have to use a smaller hook. It doesn't matter really which size you use, just a size that will go through that small area. Place a single crochet in the stitch with the stitch marker. Return to using your other size hook and place a stitch marker in the top of the single crochet you just made. Now we're going to continue in the linen stitch. Chain one and skip your next stitch. Place a single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, skip the next stitch. Place a single crochet in the chain one stitch. You're going to continue placing single crochet in every chain one space. Just continue in this manner all the way around until you reach your stitch marker. Now, when you reach your stitch marker, You'll be very tempted to miss a stitch. Don't forget to place your single crochet in that chain one space just before your stitch marker. Chain one. To begin a new round, you're actually going to be skipping over the stitch with the stitch marker. Place a single crochet in the next chain one space. Move your stitch marker to the stitch you just made. That is the first stitch of the next round. Now you will chain one and skip the next stitch. Place a single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. You're going to continue in this linen stitch pattern all the way around till you reach your stitch marker. 
Here we are at the stitch marker, and again I'm going to show you, do not skip that last stitch. Make sure you place a single crochet in the last chain one space of the round. This is how it should look. Now you will skip over the stitch with the stitch marker and place a single crochet in that chain one space. Move your stitch marker. Chain one and skip the next stitch. Place a single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. You're going to continue the linen stitch pattern all the way till you reach your stitch marker. Again, do not forget the last single crochet in the last chain one space of the round. By now you should have noticed a pattern. You're going to continue this for a total of 12 rounds. Each time you do a round, your stitch marker will move to the left. You want to continue until your stitch marker is in the very center of your piece, which is 12 rounds. As you see, my stitch marker is in the center of my piece, and just to be sure, I'm counting to make sure I have 12. I'm going to place my last single crochet in the chain one space before my stitch marker, but I'm not going to chain one. Turn your work and slip stitch in the chain one space. Now you will chain one and skip the next stitch. Place a single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Now we are doing our stitch pattern repeats, only in the row. We are decreasing every row. You're going to continue in the linen stitch pattern all the way around until you get to the chain one space just before your stitch marker. So here we are at our stitch marker. I'm going to put a single crochet in the last chain one space, but I'm not going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work, and this is how it should look. Do not chain one, but slip stitch in the next chain one space. Chain one. Skip the next stitch. Single crochet in the next chain one space. Continue in the stitch pattern. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Continue the stitch pattern all the way around until you reach the last obvious chain one space. If you have to force your stitch, then you're not in the right spot. Your last chain one space will be very easy to insert your hook into. As you can see, we are decreasing every row. Do not chain one. Turn your work. Place a slip stitch in the first chain one space. Chain one and skip one. Place a single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip one, place a single crochet. Continue in the linen stitch pattern all the way till you reach the end of this row. Again, your last stitch will be very easy to make. If you have to force your hook, then you're not in the right spot. As you can see, my finger fits nicely through the chain one space. It will not fit anywhere else, so I know that I'm on my last stitch. 
Now you will turn and double check and make sure that you're decreasing correctly. Now you will slip stitch into the next chain one space, chain one, and skip over the first stitch. Single crochet in the first chain one space. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Just continue in the linen stitch until you reach the very last obvious chain one space. By now you should be seeing a pattern. After you finish each round, you simply turn without chaining, slip stitch into the nearest chain space, chain one and skip one, then continue in the linen stitch. In doing so, you are decreasing every row. You will continue to do so until you end with three single crochet and three chain one spaces. When you get to that point, we will change it up a bit. At this point, I'm going to continue in the video showing you how to decrease in each row, but I'm not going to continue verbalizing it as I'm pretty sure you've probably caught on to the pattern by now. Here we've reached the point where we have three single crochet and three chain one spaces. You will now chain one and turn. You will completely ignore the chain one spaces. Single crochet three together over the three remaining single crochet, just as I'm showing you here. You should have one single crochet when you are done with this step. Now we are going to chain one and turn your work. Insert your hook into the remaining single crochet. Yarn over and draw up a loop. 
only make it about two inches long. Then you will yarn over and finish your single crochet by going through both loops. Take your big loop and put it behind your hook out of your way. Insert your hook one more time into that stitch and slip stitch. Fasten off and continue pulling the loop through. Taking a smaller hook and a 25 millimeter bead, slide the bead onto the loop and push it down as far as you can. You will need to weave in that tail later. Now for the fringe at the bottom. I'm going to make five fringes. I'm wrapping a piece of cardboard that is six inches wide 10 times for each fringe. I'm working from outer to inner. Going through the chain one spaces of round one will make this a lot easier. They're very easy to see and they're big enough to put this big wad of yarn through. Insert your hook from the back of your piece to the front of your piece. Fold your fringe in half and hook your yarn from front to back. This will ensure that the right side is facing out of your fringe. Now you're going to continue on the opposite side with the same process. Now I'm going to put one in the very center. Your mini macroche pocket hanger is now complete. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.